Connecticut's Dan Hurley has turned down mm. a six-year, $70 million deal from the Los Angeles Lakers. $70 million, significantly less than 100 And will return to the UConn Huskies for the three-peat in stores, Connecticut. Um, we talked about this last week. Give me a second. I, not I, a huge surprise that Dan Hurley is not going to go and uh, coach for the Lakers. Not a big surprise that he listened to the Lakers about their head coaching vacancy. I need I need a minute. Okay. I got to put go on ahead. my shock face. <gasps> oh, my God. Dan Hurley turned this down. Oh, my God. The second this news went out, we talked about it, and I went, that's a leverage play. Yes. <laughs> Real quick, let's just let's just throw this out there for those that aren't aware. Adrian Wojnarowski wrote a very long book on uh, Danny Hurley's dad. Oh, no way. So, the fact that this came from Woj right out of the gate was one of those, bing, light bulb went on immediately. And we have heard, behind the scenes, not just the sham stuff, we'd heard for six weeks that this was JJ's job to lose. And this is a win-win for both sides, mm-hmm. right? It's it's a win for the Lakers. Hey, we're going at, we are throwing a wide, we're casting a wide net. We want to get the best basketball minds that we possibly can mm-hmm. involved in this search. It's a win for Dan Hurley because of the fact that you can now say to every recruit in the country, Every kid that enters a portal, I turned down the freaking Lakers to coach LeBron James and Anthony Davis mm-hmm. because of we've got something so special here in Stores, Connecticut. And if you don't think he's selling that, you're crazy. And he's <laughs> get an even bigger win in his pocketbook because every single person that is a booster of Connecticut opened up their checkbook and said, how much is it going to take to keep him now? And we're we're going to get the undisclosed figure, but and it is a, he's going to be the highest paid coach in college basketball. And then next year we'll get the actual figure because yeah. of the fact that their books will be open. Mm-hmm. And then it's a third win, triple win here, for Woj and ESPN because Shams Sharanya of The Athletic the week before Took a bath. tweeted out, J.J. Redick is going to be the coach of the Lakers, and they got to spend five days dunking on that. Mm-hmm. And it led wall every to, bit of coverage. Wall-to-wall coverage. NBA Finals, they talked more about Hurley to the Lakers than they did the actual NBA Finals game one. They announced the whole, like, the Lakers have had their meeting, and now they're waiting on the result 40 minutes before tip-off yesterday. 40 minutes before tip-off. The Lakers, again, trying to do something on a Finals game day. And then when when you had Dan Hurley give the, I'll make the announcement on Monday, Mm -hmm. I was like, okay, yeah, he's coming back. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> everybody reading that is like, oh, it means it means it's a di- done deal with the Lakers. No, no, that's, uh-uh. I I read that as yeah, he's going back. Yeah, because you don't you don't you make don't, the announcement. That you're you don't make the announcement. Say anything. Yeah, it just if you're going to take that job. Yes. It's hey, guess who the new coach of the Lakers is? Yeah, Dan Hurley. <laughs> <laughs> this was this was all so predictable from the start. I you know you, you really hate to see it to happen to such a, a wondrous organization. I, I, to see I was it. talking to a buddy of mine this morning who's a big Lakers fan. He was venting, and I was like, "He's like, why does this keep happening to the Lakers? Like, well, because it's a poverty franchise that's run like a mom and pop, and doesn't nobody in that organization has any brains on actually how to run it professionally. That's yeah. that's that's the genuine gist of it. If they didn't exist in Los Angeles, they would be the Brooklyn Nets. Do like, you? <laughs> wow! No, I'm Man. being dead serious. They're the the only allure of the Lakers is that they're in LA and champion champion seventeenth well, champion. Yes, where does that come from though? I mean, that doesn't come from anything that's happening right now. But it, it, but no, no. But I'm saying that the championship, the history comes from them being in yeah. LA. Yeah, yeah. It's it's a place that everybody's wanted yeah. to be. If and... they were in any other city, they they aren't the Lakers. Yeah. Then that's that's true for pretty much every LA franchise. That 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 draw that allure is so unreal which is that's why i get mad at usc it's like you guys have a leg up on everyone it's it, it's a real thing and yet you fall face first into stupidity and the lakers have done the same over and over and over again because their leadership at the top you want to talk about ownership and being cheap you have a lakers franchise that doesn't go into the tax regularly they have a tv deal that gets them a hundred million dollars plus a year they are so far and above everybody else. Well, how else are they all going to live? You know, it's just, you it's, know the kids need to live somehow. Yeah, it's, they it's, need to get that money. It's just it's, it's just it's just a mom and pop organization that just it's the little guy trying. But that's how they run it because it's been ever since Doctor Bus passed away. This is how this organization has been run, and it's 
objectively hilarious. Well, now Woods is reporting that J.J. Redick will get his first formal interview with the mm-hmm. Lakers. And that leads me to the question, all right, who's getting played more here, Woj or Shams? Which one is getting played more in this conversation? Because so, Woj is doing the, I need I need to get something to to discredit Shams a little bit, right? So he does this yeah. all-in, full-court press. This is going to lead every single thing we do on SportsCenter. This is going to lead everything we do on ESPN because, again, Woj runs all of ESPN's NBA yes, coverage. He is the number one in charge. All of which it. Which means all of the talent, the writers, ev- everyone. They fall in the, line based on what he yes. wants to cover wall to wall NBA wise. Mm-hmm. He's essentially the executive director of their NBA coverage. Now, do we believe, because even JJ Reddick said it, right? Like, hey, after the finals is over, we'll talk about the Lakers thing. He's had to have had a formal interview at some point because mm, that was kind of reported not an before. Official. Not just, in a just, okay. Just a conversation <laughs> where he was maybe or may not have been may offered have been, the job. May have been a phone call, you, you know, know? Uh, maybe uh, just uh, just had some drinks. Yeah. So you can you can parse it and phrase it however you want to, but yeah, that there's there's certainly a, a level of dunking on on champs here that that's very real. But also, like the whole idea that Hurley, I loved, and this is the the hilarious thing. This, this is the most ridiculous thing out of all of this, that this was the master plan of the Lakers all along. I saw somebody who covers the Lakers tweet this out, like, "Bravo!" When this first came out, "Bravo, Lakers!" I, th- you all had us all thinking one thing, and you went the other way. I can't believe this. This is the where it went, and I'm just like, "You've watched this organization for more than five minutes, and that's." That's what the conclusion you came to? Got to tell you. Got to tell you. As a Blazer fan, we don't pick very many wins up in the win-loss column. It's a fun one to... Feels like a, it feels like a decent little W right hey, here. Hey, look, Blazers fans are out there right now who are like, this is perfect. Chauncey Billups runs through his contract through this year. They, they opt to make a change after the draft next year, and they bring in Danny Hurley. And I, <laughs> I don't think it... Gosh, I don't think it says that, but hey... Didn't take an L on this one, but I it, didn't take I mean, an L on this. The, one. I, I huh? love I love Blazers fans' willingness to find that that path to to run down. <laughs> well, Danny Hurley will will return to UConn looking for a three peat with the Huskies, and he will not be coaching the Lakers. Now you look at James Brago and JJ Redick, the two names that really started this coaching search. They are the ones that are now dead center. In the middle of this coaching search, mm-hmm. we have heard David Adelman. His name has been brought up in this this conversation. Lead assistant for the Denver Nuggets and uh, former Lincoln High School coach, yep. son of Rick Adelman. Uh, he is his name has been thrown out there in this conversation. And then now you have people saying, "Well, if they didn't get Dan Hurley. Go get Jay Wright." No, no, no. Jay's go, chilling. Go NBA. Jay Stone Cold chilling. Not only that, uh, James Brago is a name that was that was kind of tossed around. I've heard he's very likely going to get the job in Cleveland. All right. So, better job, Cleveland or Lakers? Cleveland. Whoa! Now I like that, Petty. Oh, no, I mean it's it is I a like better job. Your your, like your roster makes more sense. You have a clearer path to the finals. You're You've younger, got more youth and you have your assets still. Yeah, the, the Lakers don't have picks. They don't got space. Space. They, 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 they're they're, they're kind of hooped. Yeah, yeah it's they, they they can trade picks out and after the, at the draft at twenty thirty one, but like now. Can J.J. Redick develop Bronny James, mm. <laughs> which was my favorite part yeah. of this conversation. It's all so very dumb. All right. Uh, no Dan Hurley going to the Lakers, and we can sl- sleep a little easier that way.